Hello and welcome back to the lecture of time series econometrics. So we're discussing about different mathematical properties of AR and MA series of higher order. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about the covariance of AR2 series. And we're particularly going to talk about the Walker equation, which is going, which we'll see has a lot of implication in what you're going to do next. So we remember that uh, when we write uh, AR2 series, AS, uh, AR, AR series of order two, we write yt, is equal to phi 1 y t minus 1 plus phi 2 y t minus 2 plus epsilon 2. Now we remember the notations that we have been using for uh, correlation coefficient and variance and covariance. So we'll be using those notations. So uh, since we'll be using these notations, let me again write down. So I write rho for representing correlation coefficient, right? And when I take a lag k, I write it rho k, okay? So it's a correlation coefficient for lag k. And I write gamma for representing covariance. So when I use gamma k, k I subscript to gamma, we basically take covariance with lag k. And if the k equal to zero, special case, we get variance, right? So for is equal to variance. And if I write rho zero in the same way, what will happen? Rho zero will always be equal to one because I am dividing gamma zero by gamma zero, right? So that's rho zero is always equal to one. All right, so with these notations, we are now going to talk, we are now going to look into the covariance structure and how we are going to derive the covariance and what is this uh, Yule-Walker equation, okay? So to do that, uh, how we actually uh, derive the covariance structure is we simply multiply both sides. So there are several steps that you're going to see to kind of come to the covariance structure. So we simply multiply both sides with y t with y t minus k okay so introduce lag k here so on both side we multiply so i'll have y t minus k y t minus 1 plus phi 2 y t minus 2 into y t minus k and then at the last term, error term, epsilon t into y t minus k. So now I, if I take expectation on both the sides, so I'll have expectation of y t, y t minus k, phi 1, expectation of y t minus k y t minus 1 plus phi 2 expectation of y t minus 2 expectation of sorry t minus k let me reduce the size here plus at the last term where I write expectation of epsilon t y t minus k. All right. So what it means, so from here what you get is uh, this first term is basically the covariance term. So you can add the expectation of y t and expectation of y t minus k, so which is basically zero because the series is stationary. So you're not getting into that. You simply straight, straight away write the left hand term is cov basically we take a covariance right so we basically use gamma k covariance with a lag of k right and then is equal to phi 1 and the second term is going to be what so we have this t minus k and t minus 1 so that means i have a lag of k minus 1 right gamma k minus 1 plus phi 2 
2 this one would be t minus 2 t minus k so gamma k minus 2 gamma k minus 2 and the last term is actually going to be 0 and this is interesting to note that it will be 0 as long as our k is not equal to 0 um, as long as our k is not equal to 0 if k is equal to 0 then I will have a sigma square term here okay so if k equal to 0 I will have a sigma square so let us assume that k is not equal to 0 so I will write for k is not equal to 0 for k not equal to 0 because the moment I have k equal to 0 I will have a sigma square term that will come from this this part expectation of error term into yt minus k. So this is basically the basic form of Yule-Walker equation. Okay, this is the basic form of Yule-Walker equation. Now we actually substitute different values. Okay, we substitute different values for uh, k, right? And we're going to see uh, by substituting different values what we get. So let me again write down the Yule-Walker equation is nothing but when k is not equal to 0. Now if I divide both the side with gamma 0, what I will get is k minus 1 by gamma 0 and I have phi 2 gamma k minus 2 by gamma 0 by gamma 0 which means I will have here rho k is equal to phi 1 rho k minus 1 plus phi 2 rho k minus 2 right now now I will input values here so I will input value say first for k equal to 1 I will write k equal to 1 so what I will get is I will have rho 1 which means I have 1 lag here I will have phi 1 rho 0 and here I will have phi 2 rho phi 2 rho 1 so just note that I am actually substituting rho minus 1 and rho 1 so we will just and that is perfectly logical I'll just explain you in a bit uh, why that is the case in case you are still having some doubt so I know that rho, the value of rho 0 is equal to 1 so that means I can write rho 1 is equal to phi 1 phi 2 into rho 1 very simple equation now I have what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take rho 1 on the left and that means I will have the value of rho 1 is equal to phi 1 by 1 minus phi 2 so this is something that we can also get from the Yule Walker equation so I can write I wrote the previous equation as 1 so this one this, this one I wrote this is my equation 1 let me write down uh, this, this is my equation 1 my, Yule Walker equation 1, then I'm going to write this one as my Yule Walker equation 2, this one I can write Yule Walker equation 3. So basically all these byproducts that we get from the equation. Now I will substitute k is equal to 2, okay. So for k is equal to 2, for k is equal to 2, what I can write is, what I can write is, basically I'm for k equal to the equation 2 so rho 2 is equal to rho 1 uh, phi 1 rho 1 and then phi 2 sorry phi 2 rho 0 so rho 0 is again equal to 1 so which means my rho 2 my rho 2 is nothing but phi 1 into rho 1 which is phi 1 by 1 minus phi 2 I'm just substituting the value from equation 3 plus phi 2 because my rho, rho 0 is equal to 1 so if I can further do, do a little calculations I'll have phi 1 square and on the other side I have phi 2 square plus phi 2 by 1 minus phi 2 okay so that is a value of rho 2 and this is another you know byproduct of our Yule Walker equation.
So, um, so that's basically it. That's basically the Ulocker equation. Just note that uh, we have used in places rho 1 is equal to rho minus 1 or rho 2 is equal to rho minus 2. So it is perfectly logical because uh, when we actually this this 1 or minus 1 are basically indicating the lag, right? So when we get these covariances of different, uh, you know, uh, variables that has a lag. So here I write yt and yt minus 1, which is basically nothing but yt minus 1 into yt. And if you take expectation on both sides, then we see the same thing. So this is one way you can think of why I can write uh, rho 1 is equal to rho minus 1. The other way you can think uh, in terms of lag, how we uh, conceive the lag variable is say, I have, you know, one series, which is like this, okay. And you take say a lag one. So if you take a lag one, you, you basically shift the series uh, for one period, right? So this is my say lag one. So this is I write lag one, okay. On the other hand, if you take lag of minus one, you can write A, B, C, D, E, and you shift the series one step left, A, B, C, D, E, okay. So this is my lag of minus one. So basically both the things, as long as you are taking a correlation coefficient or covariance basically, so basically the same. So that is why we can make this assumption. So all right, we stop here. In the next lecture, we're going to do a mathematical problem uh, that involves Ewell-Walker equation.